2009, NATO Review visited the high north to analyse the security implications of the Arctic ice melting. One of the key issues that needs to be determined in the high north is the sea. At present, there's a huge mass of ice around the North Pole, but that's quickly melting. Once that becomes sea, navigable sea, the question remains, who owns that? Four years later, NATO's North Atlantic Council, which represents all 28 members of the alliance, visited the region following an invitation from Norwegian Foreign Minister Espen Barth Eide. NATO Review asked the minister why he felt the region needed more attention and how NATO could help. Minister, you've invited the North Atlantic Council to visit the High North. Can you tell me what the motivation behind that invitation was? I think the Arctic is one of those neighbourhoods uh, that is, uh, should be of uh, great interest to the uh, Alliance. Not because it is in any type of crisis or drama, rather the other way around. This is an area of cooperation. But it's also an area which is uh, opening up to a lot of new activities which we could, did not see before because of the ice cap. It's more on the global agenda, it is more on the European agenda, America's, uh, Canada and also Russia's agenda. And we are increasingly also seeing that a lot of Asian countries, uh, China and uh, uh, South Korea, Japan, Singapore, India, a lot of countries far away from the Arctic proper, take an interest in this because they see this as a global development. In the Arctic, as you say, there are different NATO countries, but different national perspectives and priorities as well. Is this a challenge for NATO because it's a security area where there might be conflicting interests? Uh, there has been different views on the degree to which this is a, an issue on, on, on NATO's table. Uh, that's clearly something I would want to admit, but I hope that we will be able to talk us through that so that we understand that uh, those of us who argue in favour are not arguing in favour because we need a NATO military presence to fence off somebody else, but simply that uh, the area is important. It's our vicinity, it's the vicinity and an entry point to, to both to North America and to Northern Europe, and as such it should be uh, on, uh, on NATO's watch list. Uh, just as we are interested in the Black Sea, which is a neighbourhood of, uh, of NATO or in the Mediterranean, or for that say the Baltic Sea, we also think the Arctic should be on NATO's watch list. My point is basically it's getting more important and it's not only important to those of us who happen to live in the Arctic, but the new sailing routes, new connections, new resource base. There are enormous fossil fuel resources, for instance. We always took an interest in areas with a lot of fossil fuel, like in the, you know, the Arab world. Uh, there are new opportunities of, for minerals, for shipping, for, for fishing and so on. And a lot of countries will be interested in just overseeing that this is well managed. Possibly the biggest problem is obviously territory, which territory belongs to who. And this is ongoing whilst the other issues are, are being decided. Is it possible to move forward on the other issues whilst the territory issue remains an ongoing dispute? So yes, there are still some uh, relatively few uh, overlapping claims, but the good news is that everyone agrees about how they're going to be solved. They're going to be solved by law and by judicial mechanisms that we all invest in, rather than you know, by conflict or fighting. That's really good. So I think that the challenges that we'll, we will be seeing in the Arctic are not so much you know, between countries. They're more shared challenges that countries have to solve together. And uh, I, I want to make very clear, I don't think all of these issues should be solved in NATO. I mean, the issues, there are issues to be solved in the Arctic Council, which is a circumpolar organization. So there are issues that will be solved in the IMO, in the International Maritime Organizations, because they are about quality of shipping, for instance, or platforms. And in terms of the challenges that the area throws up, uh, there are numerous. Uh, the, the mineral resources that are underneath, uh, the trade routes, the transit, etc. Where do you start? We basically have instruments that are capable of dealing with the level of activity that we have today. But we do not have instruments which are ready to deal with the level of activities that we know for sure that we will have in 10 years. So we have to you know, step up our uh, activities when it comes to regulating transport lines, for instance, regulating uh, uh, quality of shipping, uh, try to solve the intersection between oil and gas exploitation and fishing or other marine resources on the other side. And we have to keep working to de-conflict the still overlapping claims that are up in the area. We have de-conflicted ours, we have agreed with the Russians. Recently Canada and Denmark uh, agreed on the uh, division line between their uh, overlapping economic claims in the Lincoln Sea and there are less and less of these disputes but we have to keep working.